Hello people, in this video we want to understand this terminology engagement in obstetrics. So basically, uh, in the cephalic presentation where the head is coming out first of the fetus, you can see here that engagement has occurred. That is, um, the baby's uh, biparietal diameter, the fetal skull's biparietal diameter, that is uh, from here to here, biparietal diameter, has crossed the pelvic brim. So, the hard part of it is kind of over kind of a thing. So, that is why it is engaged. So, the greatest horizontal plane, the biparietal diameter, 9.5 centimeter, has passed the plane of the pelvic brim. And that time is when you say the head is engaged. This is when the, there is cephalic presentation. So, uh, here in this photo, you can see that uh, they have shown the biparietal diameter, 9.5 centimeter. This is what they are uh, concerned. So, if this uh, has crossed, if this has crossed the plane of the pelvic brim, okay. So, the pelvic brim is the uh, diameter of the inlet, isn't it? So, the diameter of the inlet, if it has crossed, then it is engaged, okay. So, this is a good thing, isn't it? Engagement of the head always uh, excludes disproportion. Uh, as the head is the best pelvic meter. So, it excludes disproportion. See, disproportion is a bad word. We don't like disproportion. It excludes a disproportion. That means it's a good thing, right? So, there is no disproportion. There is no cephalopelvic disproportion. The baby has sailed, can sail through. It can come out. We know it can come out, okay? Uh, apart from the shoulder, uh, dystocia, etc. But at least we know that the diameter, there is no cephalopelvic disproportion. Okay, so when does engagement occur? So it occurs between 32 to 42 weeks, guys, uh, or even during the first stage of labor, that is the dilatation of the cervix, from the onset of labor to the dilatation of cervix. At this stage, okay, it can occur or it can occur before the onset of uh, labor itself, 38 to 42 weeks it can occur. In a multigravida, however, the engagement occurs late. This is the first thing I'm hearing about multigravida having something late, isn't it? Because for them, labor will progress very fast. But the engagement occurs late in the first stage of labor or after the rupture of membranes, okay? Look at this. This is the summary of mechanism of labor. You have seen this. The first thing they write is the engagement. Can you see here, guys? The first thing that they have written in mechanism of labor is engagement. And what are these diameters that engage the plane, the plane of engagement? So many terminologies here. Look at this biparietal, suboccipitopragmatic. So let's go with this one. Suboccipitopragmatic. Okay, that is the diameter, isn't it? And if you include it with the biparietal diameter, that becomes the plane of engagement. This is almost a circle looks like, isn't it? See, they have written here almost round shape. Can you see here? Almost round shape. Okay, so biparietal is how much? 9.5 that you know. What is suboccipitopragmatic? That is also 9.5, isn't it? Look at suboccipitopragmatic here, guys. Suboccipitopragmatic, 9.5, right? And what is the other one they told you about? Biparietal. Let's go to biparietal and look at one. Biparietal, 9.5. 9.5, 9.5 makes a circle. Very good. It's almost a circle. Very good. So, look at this. This is the one they are talking about, right? Suboccipitobrigmatic. Suboccipitobrigmatic 9.5 and biparietal is 9.5. Almost a circle. This is what will engage in the most common deliveries. So, this one. So, flexed head, flexed universal flexion, cephalic presentation, right? Biparietal, suboccipitobrigmatic, almost round in shape. That much is enough for us for now. Let's go forward. How will you confirm the engagement, guys? So, you will use this uh, pelvic grip, the fourth Leopold maneuver. So, the mother is actually, uh, the her face, her head is here, okay. So, just get the orientation, how the doctor is standing and how they are putting their hands. So, here, this is the fourth Leopold maneuver. So, you will ascertain the engagement with this pelvic grip. Okay. Let's try to read more here. So, the presence are... Presence or absence of the sinciput and occiput poles. So, sinciputal or occipital poles or whether there is convergence of divergence. So, I think this is more easy for me to remember. Convergence of divergence, you tell me and then we will tell you whether it's engaged or not. Okay. Look at this one here. So, basically here it is diverging. So, do you think it is uh, engaged? Yes. Diverged has engaged. Converged? Not engaged. 
Okay. So let's go back here. Converging means not engaged. Diverging means engaged. Okay. So diverging means it has gone down. You can see the head has gone down. So diverging means head engaged. Converging means not engaged. And engagement is not only about head. It can be about breach also. Okay. Remember breach also will have the breach itself would have engaged. Okay. Now let's move to uh, what and all will help engagement. Asyncletism is beneficial in the mechanism of engagement. Asyncletism will help in engagement. Look at these images here and try to understand the B. This one shows asyncletism. How do you define asyncletism if they ask you in the exam? The sagittal shoot suture does not strictly correspond with the available transverse diameter of the inlet. So the sagittal suture will not um, uh, strictly, add, uh, strictly correspond with this inlet diameter. Okay, It will be either deflected anteriorly towards the pubic symphysis or posteriorly towards the sacral promontory. Such deflection of the head in relation to the pelvis is called as asyncretism. So it will try to, you know, bend and uh, make it, you know, go through. So that is what is asyncretism. It will help in the engagement of the head. That much you have understood, right? So what helps in the engagement of the head? Asyncretism. Now, uh, what else? When will there be no engagement? So we'll go to something red here. Okay. When will there be no engagement? See, if there are uh, twins. So let us look at something uh, red now. When will this happen if there is cephalopelvic disproportion? The head of the fetus is very big for the maternal pelvis. Basically, both of them are not supporting each other. Twins, uh, one fellow will say, I will not allow the other fellow to engage. That becomes bad. But not all twins are like that, okay? Leomyoma, that is fibroid. If there is a fibroid, then who will allow the head to come down? Huh? Tumor, same like leomyoma. Android platypoid pelvis, these pelvises have like very narrow they, or the shape, they don't allow engagement, very difficult. Antero, uh, sorry, occipital posterior, they seem to have said, okay. If there's high inclination also, there can be delay in engagement. So you can uh, reduce the inclination, angle of inclination, you can reduce by lumber eye, lumber Lumberization of the first piece of sacral vertebra. So the sacral vertebra lumberization is kind of going up, is it? So the, this is called, you will do, uh, you will reduce the angle of inclination. You will make it low inclination. So basically, facilitates early engagement. It has got no obstetric significance. Same. It's actually facilitating early engagement. Okay. Anyways, just remember for this much uh, high inclination, delay in engagement. Okay. Then, so this, again, they are uh, concluding here, no engagement, all the reasons they are writing here. If head fails to engage in a primary gravidia, even at 38 weeks, the causes, you can think, it will be a deflexed head, bringing the larger diameter to engaged, right? See, flexed means 9.5. Deflexed will be more than that, right? You have seen that here. Wait, let me show you. See, deflexed 11.5, bro presentation 14, and face is 9.5. Again, face looks fine. Okay, but uh, coming here. So they said that it will be, it could be a deflexed head bringing in a larger diameter or there could be a cephalopelvic disproportion. This we already told you, cephalopelvic disproportion. What about polyhydramnios? Mm, okay, excess amniotic fluid. What is hydrocephalus? The baby's head is swollen kind of thing. That's kind of dangerous. Poor formation or yielding of lower uterine segment preventing the head to sink into the pelvis. They are blaming some lower uterine segment is uh, poor, poorly formed, they are saying. Okay. Then, placenta previa. Placenta previa is waiting there at the cervix, not allowing the baby's head to go down. Looks like pelvic tumors, we already told you, fibroid, fibroid, ovarian tumors. High pelvic inclination also, we told you the pelvic inclination. So, it's the inclination of home of the pelvis. Functional, there is no cause known. Okay. So, let's write a high pelvic inclination okay that's it guys so we already told you what the causes are are of no engagement let's summarize this <coughs> high pelvic incl inclination we wrote this we wrote twins leomyoma android platypoid pelvis uh, okay twins they didn't write see here this is from the textbook they didn't write twins okay we'll add twins what do you say people because sometimes sometimes twins can do this sometimes okay not all twins, but yes, sometimes twins may not allow the engagement of the other. Okay. 
So this is all about engagement, guys. So let's take a recap. Engagement basically is the biparietal diameter has passed the plane of the pelvic rim. This is engagement. This is when it is cephalic presentation. Even a breach you can call as engaged or not engaged. Okay. So basically, uh, the significance is that in a cephalic presentation, if the head is engaged, then you can exclude this proportion that is CPD. You can exclude. Then uh, when does the head engage for a primary gravida from uh, 38 to 42 weeks or even during the first stage of labor in multigravida it occurs late in the first stage of labor. Okay, uh, then uh, coming to the plane of engagement for a normal uh, for a very common uh, cephalic presentation with complete flexion right biparietal suboccipital brigmatic 9.5 9.5 so it's almost a round shape. Okay. How will you confirm engagement? You will use the Fort uh, uh, Leopold maneuver, uh, that is the pelvic grip. <coughs> then, uh, uh, how will you know if there's convergence or divergence? Then look at this. If there is divergence, if it has diverged, then it has engaged. If it's diverged, it's engaged. Remember, converged not good. It hasn't engaged. It's not that it's not good, but probably it hasn't been engaged yet and it will engage later, right? But remember, if you want it to be engaged, what are you expecting? The hands to diverge. Asynclitism will help the engagement, okay? Asynclitism will help. If no engagement occurs, it is because of um, deflexed head, cephalopelvic disproportion or a big head of the baby, polyhydramnios, Poor formation of the lower uterine segment, hydrocephalus, placenta previa, pelvic tumor, high pelvic inclination or functional where you cannot find any cause as such. Twins also don't forget. That's it for now. In this video, you have understood engagement. Bye-bye.